Thank you, Mr. President. President Barroso, as in the, all the speeches before, you describe a class which is half full as half, as totally full. I will demonstrate the class is still half empty. You spoke about figures. Yes, there are some good figures. We are happy about that. But I want to speak about people, about women, about the younger generation, about children who suffer still with this austerity policy. You spoke about increasing investment uh, confidence. But why, Mr. Barroso, is there a lack of confidence of citizens in Europe? This has to be answered also by the Commission, the Commission President. Recently, also, Prime Minister Samaras, the future presidency of the Council, spoke about the recovery with 60% still unemployed of the young people, with uh, trying to find a new package for Greece. Some people speak about a recovery. Spain, you read probably recently the article about the young the generation, the children who have to go to school to be fed because they cannot get meals enough at home. And do you know, Mr. Barroso, how many jobs have been created in Spain in the last months? 31. 31 new jobs. This is the recovery in Spain. That's a scandal. In Portugal, your own country, I don't know if, Mr. Barroso, you spoke like I did recently when I was in Santo Paulo with the Caritas. They can show you that children are taken out of the kindergarten because people are ashamed to send their children with the poor clothes into the kindergarten. This is also the reality of Europe. Show that the glass is not only half full, it's also half empty. Still, we have still a lot to do and to change the policies also of the Commission. <laughs> because austerity is increasing the rift between the rich and poor, between the north and the south. It is enhancing racism and xenophobia, blaming the others, the foreigners, the migrant workers, the welfare tourists from Bulgaria and Romania is very popular, for example, in Great Britain by the Conservatives and even more by UKIP and others. This is also Europe today. Austerity is undermining solidarity between states, but also between citizens. Yes, I agree we need a strong Europe, a much stronger Europe. How can we support Kathy Ashton's important work if we don't have a stronger Europe? And that means, of course, also more investment. Because investment, public and private investment, is lacking. I saw many young entrepreneurs who would like to go for new startups if they would get credits and investment. I've been recently at Porsche and BASF, one of the leading companies in Germany, and I saw the high quality of work. But you know, Mr. Barroso, even in rich Germany, there's a lack of investment in infrastructure. They have to close bridges in highways because they cannot be repaired. And some people say internet speed is sometimes slower in rich Germany than in some of our poorer country. So we have to fight together in all our countries for more investment. <laughs> Mr. Barroso, you mentioned uh, also the civil uh, liberties situation. Yes, you're right, but I would be even stronger how can it be that a black minister in Italy is attacked again daily, even some of the members here in this parliament? It's a shame. We should be proud to have a black minister in one of our European governments. <laughs> journalists and even friends of journalists are intimidated in some of the countries. Laws against media freedom are passed in some of our countries. And Roma are attacked again even stronger than before. And that we have to fight against. Uh, very strongly. Therefore, I demand from the Commission more policies for economic recovery, more policies for social co co cohesion and solidarity, and more strengths for uh, defending Europe of the rule of the law. And therefore, you mentioned some of the proposals will come forward. For example, the social dimension of the EMU. But I ask you, things have been ready already in spring. Why does it need nearly half a year to come forward with that? Are you afraid that some governments are against it? I didn't hear, perhaps you mentioned, 
We passed a legislative proposal on the restructuring of industry because we want to restructure the industry. We are not conservatives to say once an industry has to stay an industry as it is, but it must be under social conditions. Why don't you have the courage to come forward with a legislative proposal on the restructuring of industries? Because of, of some of the countries are against it. You are president of the commission. The commission must have the strength also to fight not only with this parliament, but also with the council. And I hope at least that you come forward with some proposals on these issues or some in your commission preventing this. We need that. And also on health and safety regulation, because I spoke about the health situation. We just have to have a quick look into the book, Why Austerity Kills, Kills in the True Sense. Why in austerity, the, the rate of uh, suicide is increasing and many other things. Therefore, we need also uh, health and safety regulations also from the, from the Commission. But let me address also the Council. We had an agreement on the MFF. Why is the Council breaking the agreement on the MFF? We had an agreement to, in this case together with the Commission fighting for front-loading the fight against youth unemployment. <coughs> the Council doesn't front-load, the Council reduces the money for youth unemployment. This is not acceptable for us. <laughs> How can you present a budget for 2014 which is not up to the standard, which is not up to the agreement? How can the Council violate the law and the treaty in not negotiating with the parliament about things which have to be negotiated. We have to stick to the law and to the rules and I demand from the council to come forward with a reasonable budget in the framework of the MFF order for 2014. We will not, my group will not decide on a budget which is not up to the standard to fight against youth unemployment in Europe because this is the biggest task. Talk alone is not enough. We want action also from the Council. <laughs> and we expect on the FTT, because there is now a lot of torpedoing against the FTT, we expect from the Council and of course with the help of the Commission that finally the promise to our citizens that also the financial sector has to contribute it by the FTT be the cap. It's not acceptable that so many citizens suffer and the banks and the financial institutions do not their um, contribution to make the crisis a uh, solve. This is not acceptable. <laughs> At the end, uh, we will have an election campaign, the president referred to it. The center left has <laughs> very different approaches than the center right on many issues, especially on social issues. But I hope that the center of this parliament is defending the future of Europe. If there are some governments now who say that the, the sentence ever-closing union has to be deleted, we say no. We want an ever-closing union in economic fields, in foreign affairs. This is the only way we can go. And therefore, I believe in the vision of the United States of Europe. And as the United States of America is not a unitary state, Europe never will be. It will have its diversity. But get rid of this nationalism and xenophobia. With all our differences between right and left, <coughs> let's fight for a common Europe. A Europe is strong enough to defend itself. A Europe is strong enough to say whatever we have to say and to do from Syria to Egypt and, and in the competition with China and all the others. We cannot defend the interests of our citizens if we go back to nationalism and xenophobia. We have to go forward to a common, united Europe. Thank you very much. Oh.